Well, depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. Are the illustration rares? Now, once again, they have listed this as 1 in 13 over on TCG Player. Correct. I still contend this is 1 in 12. And look, they've got more data than I have, but I am telling you every box I've seen has three illustration rares. 36 packs per box, 1 in 12. You, I've not seen these random boxes that are getting a fourth illustration rare. And what? <laughs> you serious? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm apparently on a mission to get every other content creator in this niche to hate my guts, um, except for Brian, of course. Um, so yeah, we're going to talk about PTCG Radio in a recent video of his that he did. That It's a 12-minute long video, and the first six minutes of it are, let's just say, off. Um, so yeah, I'm going to discuss that in the uh, end of this video. But real quick, guess what? If your name is Rick in Maryland... You won the Nintendo Switch game, the signed autoed Derpy Q on the SV Era promo card, and the Japanese file binder. So, Rick and Maryland, congratulations. Hit me up, bruh. In today's giveaway, we have another display box, a do not open, just display box, courtesy of this guy, Brian. Uh, another Japanese file binder, and another Derpy Q. Guys, I'm not going to be signing these on S.V. Era uh, Cosmofoil promos, you know, forever. I'm just saying, a little exclusivity, and just because, um, you know, She-Hulk, she's all about that positivity, so I'll give you a 1991 Impel trading card tree. Let's see who else is in here. Hulk, that means it could be Wolverine, Spider-Man, or somebody else in the middle, because there's three cards in each pack. Anyway, if you want to uh, win all this stuff, courtesy of Brian at Pokey N.E., uh, just leave a comment and be subscribed. And once again, Rick and Maryland, hit me up on IG for this stuff. Oh, look, we're going to talk about Stellar Crown today, guys. Stellar Crown, my thoughts, my opinions, and we're going to talk about pull rates, and we're going to compare it to Obsidian Flames. All right. Good job. What's going on, Bruce? And once again, uh, congratulations to Rick and Maryland. Hit me up to claim your prize. Guys, we are over halfway through Poke Positivity September, and the giveaways are only going to get better and better and better. So today, today we are here to talk about Stella Crown. Turn that frown upside down, because Stella Crown is mid at best. Ooh. That didn't rhyme. I'm very sorry, but to be honest, I put two weeks ago I made a tier list, and I put Stella Crown at C tier, along with Scarlet and Violet base set, above... Uh, shredded fumble and obsidian lames um, and to be honest I might make now that I've opened about three hundred dollars worth and I pulled a couple of SIRs mm, 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 I um, I part of me wants to move it up to B tier and I'm gonna explain why basically I think the Pokemon company we're gonna compare obsidian flames to stellar crown now that we know the pull rates we're gonna co compare and contrast and because Obsidian Flames, um, I made a video recently, like, what, 10 days ago, two weeks ago, called uh, Why Stellar Crown is Obsidian Flames 2.0. The reason I made that video is because it's an improvement over Obsidian Flames, hence the 2.0, guys. Okay, that's what I was saying. All right, I wasn't saying it was absolute dog shit. And by the way, I don't even think Obsidian Flames is absolute dog shit. I actually made a video about why Obsidian Flames is better than Shredded Fumble. There is a set I think is dog shit. Okay, but let's bring it back. Okay, yes, I am going to, at the end of this video, we're going to have a little... Very rarely do I do reaction videos, but it is something that I do do from time to time. Okay, and uh, PCTG Radio. This is a guy who was on my uh, 2023 Pokemon Content uh, Creators of the Year video back when I was a wee baby uh, YouTuber last year. Um, I used to be called Pokedan TCG, right? I made a video, and I had categories, and most informative, I gave the dub to PTCG Radio. I respect the hell out of him. Man, I respect you. Please don't kill me. Um, I know he's very defensive, though. Um, so, you know, I... <laughs> 
but you done fucked up and you didn't own up to it and half the people in your comment section let you know you fucked up and you didn't respond to a single person and i don't know if that's a policy where you just don't like anyway we're gonna get into that i'm gonna talk about ptcg radios tiny little screw up um at the end of the video i'm gonna react to it okay um because yeah e easily avoided all you have to do is acknowledge that you screwed up put it in the co pin it in the comment section and that way every single person that wants to go into your video and tell you you're wrong will just see the pinned comment and be like oh okay cool he knows all right never mind and move on with their life okay there's nothing wrong with admitting you're wrong as a content creator um because it actually builds more trust and if you're someone who takes this profession seriously and it's like your actual job i think you should be held accountable when you are completely wrong so yes i realize it is poca positivity september and i'm supposed to wait till october before i do another drama video but that's why i'm just gonna add it add it to the end i'm just gonna sneak it into the end of this video because again if you're wrong you're wrong and it's fine just own up to it let the people know that you noticed and thank you for correcting me that's all i'm saying okay and you guys know that i think you guys have a lot of power in this niche in this content creation bubble so it's good that you guys corrected the man the man just needs to own up to it and uh yeah, yeah. all right so anyway let's get into uh stella crown all right so stella crown um first of all i've opened about 300 dollars worth uh didn't follow my own advice didn't only buy booster boxes which you know is fine do as i say not as i do i i, I really like the laddie s and the tinkaton promo so i went hard on three pack blisters and yeah i think i got a, a bunch of very nice copies of those and somehow some way even though i only spent uh 300 bucks i did get lucky and i pulled two sirs so that's cool um especially given these nerfed pull rates with sirs you know, I could have done a lot worse. That's, whew, like, we're going to talk about pull rates, actually. So, first of all, overall general first impression of uh, Stellar Crown is I think Stellar Crown is the Pokemon company perfecting how to do a smaller set. Whereas Obsidian Flames, they didn't realize the problems they had by just going with the normal pull rates and making a smaller set. They accidentally made a set where everything is just astronomically easy to pull. I think they very quickly realized their mistakes because they saw the community reacted and, you know, all, all the Obsidian Flames cards tanked quickly. Okay, absolutely. Um, so every set that comes out, they're always tweaking things. They're always trying new mechanics, little new gimmicks. They're always, they're never satisfied. And that is something you have to give the Pokemon company credit for is always improving and always paying attention. Okay, so as it relates to Stellar Crown, these pull rates... So, 1 in 13 for the IRs, we have 1 in 90 for the SIRs, and we have 1 in 137 for the Hyper Rares. Compare that to Obsidian Flames, still 1 in 13 with the Illustration Rares, but now we're only at 1 in 32 for the SIRs, and for the Hyper Rares, 1 in 52. And these sets from those two rarity tiers... Other than the fact that Obsidian Flames has 12 IRs and Stellar Crown has 13 IRs, other than that, those are a match. We're talking three Hyper Rares, six SIRs, 12 and 13 IRs. So to see that drastic of a, uh, a pull rate difference in the course of a year on two sets that are essentially the exact same size, that's, that's just a massive, massive difference. And that puts Stellar Crown just on mathematics, pull rates, viability of investment viability of certain cards going up in value just it's like double the triple more likely that stellar crown singles or stellar crown itself is just going to age better than obsidian flames even though it's a charizard set even though it's a charizard set okay when you tweak with pull rates this much from set to set to the extent where i can tell you obsidian flames is like this and stellar crown is like that that is something people are going to notice and something investors are actually going to pay attention to and act upon, okay? So I can guarantee you there's a lot of people based on these nerf pull rates that believe in Stellar Crown way more strongly than they believe in Obsidian Flames, even though Obsidian Flames is a Charizard set, okay? So I 100% give all the credit in the world to the Pokemon company 
for tweaking things in a way that made a small set viable for everyone. The long-term investors, the players, the collectors. There's a lot of good things about this set. Whether it's it's somewhat easy to master, whether it's has actual chase cards that are actually hard to pull. And if you look at Terrapagos, Terrapagos CX is one of the few cards that's been going up in value over the last three or four days since the set has released. And by Terrapagos CX, I mean the Ultra Rare. I do not mean the SIR, okay? All I'm saying is there's a little bit of everything in here. And I will also say this. The Full Arts, the the Terra Full Arts with the rainbow borders. I think it was I heard Poke Office said it's just so much worse than the Japanese. I don't care. They look good. They look good. You, When you uh, open a pack and you accidentally see that color on the border, it's like undeniable. Ooh, I'm about to pull a Full Art or an SIR or an EX. And the Lapras is a banger. Terrapagos. Please say it with me. Like Galapagos. It's Terrapagos. The amount of people that can't freaking pronounce Terrapagos like Galapagos. It's just Terrapagos. 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 Terra. Pagos. Terrapagos. Okay, we're good. So the Turtle Club is strong in this one. The Turtle cards are doing well. Squirtle is a week away from being pumped to the moon. I'm just kidding, but let's be honest. <laughs> Whether it's a week from now, two weeks from now. Mm. Let's look at, uh, let's go hop over to TCG Player and let's look at the card values now that a lot of them have tanked. Let's just have a little fun and uh, check out where things are at at this moment in time. All right, so as we can see, everything is down since Friday. Terrapagos SIR is down to 113. Lacey is under 50 now, already dropped down from like 80 or 100 to 48. Even Squirtle's down, Hydrapple, literally everything in this set is down. Briar is up slightly, but way down. Uh, Dash Bun, super down. So here's the thing. These golds, what, what did we say they were? We said they were as specific as 1 in 411 and one, or for any of them, because there's only three, one in 137 packs, these have a chance of holding value, okay? They do, uh, but still, down to 22, area zero under depths, down to 20, bravery charm, only 10 bucks, even though it's exceptionally difficult to pull, it's $10, doesn't matter. Look at rainbow secret rares like Giratina from Lost Origin and Sword and Shield, that card is a one in 2,500 pack pull, and it's worth $15, okay? So the full arts are good, Zoror is seven bucks. This Lapras full art is an absolute banger. I have no idea why the Cinderace is only three dollars and the Lapras is five. You pull the Cinderace, you feel like you pulled an SIR. This Cinderace goes so hard. I love this Cinderace. Let's look at this. I don't know. It's just a beautiful, beautiful full art. The hat, the, the gems, all that stuff. It looks freaking good. All right, it looks good. Lay off. It it does. So and and again, I see a lot of beautiful arts, a lot of mixture. Um, but here's the thing. Here's what I'm going to do. Okay. This reboot, let's talk about cards that I'm going to go buy up or I think have a chance of going up, I guess. Um, so first of all, I think Briar, you know, Professor Sada's Vitality from Paradox Rift is like 13 bucks, And that's a big set where a card like that could easily be worth more. So this Briar could be 12 or 13 or 15 bucks in a month or two from now. But I'm just saying, I God, it's so beautiful. I don't know. I love the Briar. Dash Bun looks great. Terrapagos is actually up. This card, let's take a look at this card's chart. Uh, this will be on this week's hottest cards. So if you look at the one month, it went as down as low as 10 bucks, and it's already up to about 14 again. So again, there's some future potential playability here with Terrapagos. So Terrapagos, anytime you have a regular EX pull that you can net 10 bucks on or more, 14 bucks, that's just, that's just good. This is a good thing. Absolutely. Um, overall, I think the set looks very beautiful, uh, way more uh, cohesive and put together than Obsidian Flames. The illustration rare gallery is undeniably better. And something I would do that I do every set is I just go out and I gobble up all the IRs that are just being pooped on. Like all this, like Archaladon, Meditite, Lilip, Milsery, Crabominable. Uh, Tortinator, all these you can go to, like Tortinator, you can go get for two bucks right now. You know, Milsery, three bucks. I'm talking the at, at a card shop where they round up. So if it says $2.12, they'll charge you three. Like all these IRs, these are the kind of IRs that six months down the road are like four and five and six dollars. 
Like I've seen it every single set that comes out. The bottom third IRs, you know, or almost half, most of the IRs will get just devastated while one or two are, are like glorified. And then you get a scenario like where a few months down the road, they're like double in price, which might only be two to four dollars or three to six dollars. But I've seen it. So it wouldn't be a bad idea to gobble up a lot of these cheaper, very much uh, cheaper ones, in my opinion. But overall, the set is very cohesive. It's beautiful. It's small. Uh, let's go back to me. But overall, again, I think the set is just, it's its very well put together. It has beautiful cards at every rarity tier. It has uh, decreased pull rates, which does nothing but help a smaller set. There's nothing that could be worse for a small set than easy pull rates. So to, to vastly nerf to where you're literally two to three times harder if you look at a you know one to one ratio versus Obsidian Flames for each rarity tier, that just that's very good. That's what people like me want to see um, because before Stellar Crown, you know, I basically is kind of writing it off just simply for the standpoint that it's a small set, knowing how things historically have worked over the last year or two. But when the hyper rares are so darn hard, when the the SIRs are so darn hard, like two two out of a whole case of six booster boxes, like and then on top of that. Even though they're all 1 in 13 as far as the IRs go from set to set, the amount of booster boxes that I have seen specifically for this set, Stellar Crown, that the content creator or whoever is done opening the box, and all they pulled was two IRs out of the whole box, like, that's I've never seen that on such a large scale. So I'm not sure what is getting in the way of that third IR from always being in your booster box. You know, it's 1 in 13. All I'm saying is, Every Temporal Force, every Paradox Rift, every Paldea, I've always seen it like it was more of a 1 in 12, not a 1 in 13. Whereas this feels like a 1 in 13 plus. Like, I've seen a lot of booster boxes get open and only have two IRs. I've seen a Stellar Crown booster box get open, have two ARs, one A spec, you know, one, one full art, no SIR, no hyper rare. Like, just absolute loss, you know, which... Obsidian Flames, it's just not happening. You open one case of Obsidian Flames and you've essentially mastered the whole set given those pull rates. So again, Stellar Crown is a small set in the Scarlet and Violet era done correctly, done absolutely correctly in my opinion. I think the pack opening experience is a lot funner than some of these other smaller sets. Um, I think there's what, 14 or 15 hollow rares um, and 140 or 150 cards in the regular set. So you definitely, while ripping open these packs, you get way more variety in the reverse hollow and the hollow slot compared to, say, Shredded Fumble, where you will just see the same reverse hollow, same hollow rares over and over and over again. In like, open 36 packs of Shredded Fumble and then open 36 packs of Stellar Crown. And 9 out of 10 times you do that, I, I think everyone un unanimously would say... It was way more fun opening Stellar Crown than it was opening my 36 packs of uh, Shredded Fumble. Uh, yeah, because set size does matter and variety does matter. And if you're not going to hit anything, hitting something that looks different from what was in the last pack actually does matter. And so I think Stellar Crown really, really, they hit the nail on the head on how to do a small set. And again, Pokemon right now in this era is doing small sets, medium sets, and large sets. Every single set you can fit into one of those three slots and they basically match up with the others in that slot for every rarity tier. So again, Stellar Crown for me, you know, I, I might move it up to a B because it really is a good small set, fun to open, fair amount of value, has cards, Kanto, brand new Pokemon that, you know, younger people love, and it has the Kanto Pokemon that the old the old people, you know, the Kanto boys love. So it has a little bit of everything, and yeah, in the ultra the ultra premium collection, we'll have the Gal Gal I almost said Galapagos Terrapagos full art in it, and you know who knows? Maybe the ultra premium collection will be a hit. Maybe it won't. We'll see. Um, but I'll definitely be picking up at least one because you know it's a decent set and it's fun to open. And the, the pack opening experience is way better than the last set, Shredded Fumble. All right. So that's the end of this video, except now I'm going to react to PTCG Radio's Fumble. All right, here we go. The first six minutes of PTCG Radio's 
12 minute long video about stellar crown pull rates i'm going to react to and yeah if anyone in the comment section below can tell me if he has responded because we already know he hasn't responded at all in the comment section 113 means they're one well, two not four you mean the amount of comments the amount of people that have attempted to correct the man in the comment section in this video there's 82 80 something comments over half of them are people people who support you support your videos people who support the hell out of you going out of their way to let you know people who like comment and subscribe to you and not a single response to any of these people not a single like like i don't know if the guy just has a zero respond policy or that's like blocked behind a patreon paywall but there's so many people that are like hey and all you would have to do is pin a comment to the top saying oh shoot i screwed up and then none of these people would be trying to correct you so all right let's go ahead and let's go ahead and watch this because, yeah, I mean, this is the man's job, and you got to be accountable for when you're just Good morning, stuff. or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio. So today, it's time to have a look at the pull rates for Stellar Crown. The lovely folks over at TCG Player have gone and done that thing they tend to go and do, where they have opened up a whole mess of booster packs, and they have told us what the approximate pull rates are for each type of card. Now, I do need to remind you guys this. I tell you every time, and I'm going to keep telling you every time, because this is very important. They have opened up around 8,000 booster packs. They are using data from around 8,000 booster packs. That is a lot of booster packs. That makes the data pretty good. Yes, it, it does not make the data perfect. And frankly, 8,000 booster packs. When you consider how many booster packs are going to be opened off Stellar Crown, you absolutely could get some data from 8,000 packs, which was not 100% reliable. To be clear, I'm sharing this with you because I think they're pretty much spot on. And I'm sharing it with you because they've opened up more packs than anyone else who I can see that's sharing the data. And certainly they've opened a lot more packs than me. But I do need to just remind you guys, 8,000 packs is a lot. It is decent data. It is not infallible. And we should not pretend that it is. So far, good. so good. Good. So far, so, so good. the most common of these fancy cards you're going to get are the illustration rares. Now, once again, they have listed this as 1 in 13 over on TCG Player. Correct. I still contend this is 1 in 12. And look, they've got more data than I have, but I am telling you every box I've seen has free illustration rares. 36 packs per box, 1. I have seen multiple creators from Danny Phantom to Poker Rev to you name it who have opened up Stellar Crown booster boxes and only pulled two irs it is very well documented on the tube okay one in 12 you i've not seen these random boxes that are getting a fourth illustration rare and if they were one in 13 there should be the odd box that gets a fourth illustration rare i just i don't see these and if you've seen any let me know in the comment section but i haven't and it should be a moderately common occurrence to get a fourth illustration rare in a box. So they're listed as one. Okay, so this is what we're talking about here. As we all know, one in 13 means your chances of pulling an IR is more difficult uh, than one in 12, okay? So obviously the man, uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know, this is, a, this is just a, 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 he's just screwed up. I don't know how else to say this. Um, these rates no one is saying no one on planet earth is saying you can get four irs in a box which is why you haven't seen it ptcg radio what they're saying is you have a chance of only getting two hence why your entire comment section that you apparently haven't even looked at or responded to once um, is trying to tell you okay but you know what you're the professional you do your research you know what's going on um and yeah so let's keep keep listening one in 13 at tcg player i still think they're one in 12 and certainly in terms of booster boxes i am convinced they are in fact one in 12 
How many wow. different ones do we have right. in the set as a whole? <laughs> well, on. we've got 13. So, of course, what we should do here is times 13 by 12. And that gives us a... If you want a specific one, like, for instance, the Bulbasaur or the Squirtle, which are by far the most sought after, then that means that you should get a specific one, one in every 156 packs. Of course, if they're one in 13, they should be one in every 169 packs. TCG Player has got them listed as 167. But again, I don't think 167 is right. If they're one in 12 packs like I think they are, then a specific one should be one in 156. If they are one in 13 packs, then they should be one in 169. Everything you just heard is completely irrelevant because they are not 1 in 12 and they are not 1 in 156. This is all based, apparently, on his error of not understanding the way fractions and ratios work. So this is 100% misinformation. Because, generally speaking, they are printed on sheets with the same number, so each of the illustration rares should be exactly as rare as the other. So it should be 1 in 13 True. times 13, which is 1 in 169. So the 167 number, again, I don't think is exactly right. I think it's very close, but I do think it should be exactly 1 in 169. Or if it's 1 in 12, like I'm saying, should be 1 in 156. Either way, those numbers are all very close together. So regardless of which one is exactly right, you've got a rough guess there. Now, A specs come around 1 in 20 packs, apparently, which is the same as we've seen for the last couple of sets. We'll do a comparison at the end to the last couple of sets. And 1 in 20 means you should get 2 in a booster box, but there's no guarantee. And you should have about a 50% chance of getting 1 in an Elite Trainer box, but again, that's not entirely perfect. 36 packs in a box. If there were 40 packs, you should get two ace perk per box. Just under 40 packs, 36, means just under two per box. And of course, there are... That is perfect. Yeah, there's two per box, almost every box. But there's some boxes where you only pull one. And that is what I've seen a lot of. Three different A specs in the set. So a specific A spec will come out one in 60 packs. Which, incidentally, is exactly what TCG Player have got. So I agree with them entirely on this one. If there's a 1 in 20 chance of pulling any A spec, and there are three A specs available, again, they're printed on sheets here, which should have the same number on each. So the chance of any specific... These three A specs are a lot like the three IRs from Paldean Fates. Because there's only three of them, you're going to end up pulling a lot of them. This spark, the Grand Tree, I've, I've, I haven't even opened that much, and I've, I've pulled like five Grand Trees already. I'm just saying, whenever you only have three in a slot and you don't nerf the pull rates, because 1 in 20 has been the same for all the A specs, in Paldean Fates, the IRs were 1 in, 12, 1 in 13, just like usual, but there's only three. So you ended up with tons of Palafins, tons of Wug Trios, tons of Pommies. If you open up a ton of this set, you're gonna oh, you're gonna end up with a ton of these a specs because there's only three at one in twenty. You're gonna get so many duplicates of these. That's not so great. Specific one should be one in twenty times three, which is one in sixty, which works. But actually, more common than the a spec are the ultra rares, your full arts, which could of course be full art supporters or full art Pokemon. Either will do. And yes, I do like Full Art Orphworm. And yes, I'm aware I'm not supposed to like Full Art Orphworm. And I don't care. Because I think <laughs> Full Art Orphworm is awesome. <laughs> Pulled it in Japanese. Cards, Very happy. Although it's actually boring. really cheap in Japanese. Could have just bought it as a single. But according to TCG Player, these come out 1 in 15 packs. So you should get two of these per box. And if you get a third one, you've done pretty lucky. Approximately 1 in 2.5 boxes. Or 2 in 5 boxes will have a third one of these in there. Cool. I like doing maths in these videos. It makes me happy. If I make any dumb maths mistakes, let me know in the comment section. Oh, they let you know. And the thing is... Again, guys, 
it's not that big of an issue. It really isn't. He just got something technically wrong, and it was kind of silly, all right? But again, the only reason I'm even drawing attention to it is because of the complete lack of response and follow-up. And again, if anybody knows, if he wrote somewhere obscurely, like on his Twitter X or Instagram or anything, like, oh, yeah, he screwed up. I'm just saying, didn't respond to anybody. And, you know, he takes this seriously. It's like his job. And I've had a couple of videos lately that have had 200, 300 comments. And, you know, I, I respond to all of them. You know, I, I at least like them and pretty much respond to all of them. And I think that's important to engage with your audience. And again, if he would have just simply pinned a comment to the top of that video and just simply said, hey, uh, oops, my bad, sorry, um, this wouldn't have happened and I wouldn't have made an issue and it's whatever. So yeah, I'm just, I'm just saying it's not a big deal. I, it, I just made it a slight deal because of his total lack of owning up to, the, to him being wrong. Anyway, that's all I got. If you want to uh, enter in today's giveaway, just leave a comment. Like, comment, subscribe. Deuces. Do it! Just do it! Don't let your dreams be dreams. Yesterday, you said tomorrow. So just do it! Make your dreams come true! Just do it!